Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a 5-color Saga deck featuring Tom Bombadil as our commander. The 5-mana 4-4 Legendary God Bard has Indestructible and Hexproof as long as we have 4 or more lore counters among Sagas we control. So it's not that easy to accomplish. And then whenever the final chapter ability of a Saga we control resolves, we get reveal cards from the top of our library until we reveal a Saga card and we can put it straight onto the battlefield without having to pay its mana cost. So Tom rewards us for playing tons of sagas. It's also better to play Tom when we already have a few sagas going, not only to potentially protect Tom from removal, but also to get immediate value as soon as one of those sagas finishes on the following turn. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck, which I've split up into a few different categories. The sangas are all throughout. So the first one is interaction, ways to remove opposing permanents and give us other ways to interact with the opponent's game plan. And those include Curse of Silence to name the opponent's commander to make it more expensive. And once they play it, we can cash it in for an extra card. We do have a small enchantment sub theme as well, of course, because we're playing all these sangas. So Curse being a one man enchantment has quite a few benefits. Source to Plowshares, just very efficient removal alongside Thought sees as a hand disruption spell and a lightning bolt, kind of the one mana staples. Then we've got a D spark at two mana, also quite flexible at exiling more expensive permanents. Elspeth's Nightmare or First Saga is a very good one, can destroy a smaller creature, maybe take away a non-creature non-land card from the opponent's hand and then exile their graveyard as well. Then we've got a few sweepers with the Day of Judgment, Wrath of God, as well as Supreme Verdict. And then the Frankston Scriptures, a saga that can also eventually destroy all non-artifact creatures after turning one of our creatures into an artifact. And then all these sweepers also synergize quite well with Tom if we can manage to make it indestructible first by having enough sagas on the battlefield. Then the Acrona War can steal an opposing creature, force the opponent to attack and then deal damage to tapped creatures equal to their power, so it can also be kind of a one-sided sweeper. Binding the Old Gods is excellent, helping us destroy an opposing non-land permanent and then finding a forest, which includes our Trilands with a forest subtype, so it has quite a bit of mana fixing capabilities as well. Then Elspeth Conquers Death, another great saga, exiling a permanent an opponent controls with mana value 3 or greater, then makes their non-creature spells cost 2 more for a turn, and eventually returns a creature or planeswalker from our graveyard to the battlefield with an extra plus 1 counter or loyalty counter, so we can sometimes let Tom go to the graveyard instead to back to the command zone and get it back with Elspeth Conquers Death. And then because Tom is on the battlefield before we fully resolve Elspeth Conquers Death, we even get to trigger Tom's ability right away and put another saga on the battlefield for free. So that's great. The Eldest Reborn is very similar, can make the opponent sacrifice a creature or planeswalker, make them discard, and eventually gets back a creature or planeswalker from any graveyard onto the battlefield under our control, so that also includes the opponent's stuff. Then we've got another sweeper with a Battle of Frost and Fire, dealing 4 damage to each non-giant creature, lets us scry 3, and eventually we get to draw 2 and discard whenever we cast an expensive spell during the final chapter. Leyline Binding we can usually cast for 1 or 2 mana in this deck, thanks to all the basic line types for Domain. And then we've got a Rivers Rebuke as a one-sided bounce effect, sending everything packing. And the Kami War, another great five-color saga, exiling an opposing non-land permanent. Then we can bounce something and make the opponent discard, and eventually get a 6-6 six -six flyer that can also get stuff back from the graveyard. Then our next category is Mana Acceleration, because we are a five-color deck trying to cast some expensive spells, so developing our mana is quite important. Many journeys can let us play an extra land and also happens to be a saga. Explorer draws a card and lets us play an extra land similar to Gross Parallel. Then there's Into the North to find a snow-covered land, which is why we have the snow-covered basics in the deck. Sanctum Weaver, another payoff for playing lots of enchantments, making X mana of any one color where X is the number of enchantments we control, and itself is also an enchantment creature. We've got the Naturalist giving all enchantments a 1 mana discount on a 2-2 lifelink. Arcane Signets and Cold Seal Heart help us ramp and fix our mana. Restoration finds a Plains, which we can maybe put on the battlefield, helping us ramp in the process, and turns into a 3-4 creature with Vigilance, making additional 1-1s. Cultivate is always great to have to fix our mana and ramp. The Weather Seed Treaty can also find a basic land and put it on the battlefield tapped, makes a sapperling, and eventually can also pump up one of our creatures for each basic land type we control. And since we can read ahead, we can also potentially start from any different chapter we'd like. We've got the Celestis for more ramp and a bit of card selection. Firemind Vessel, I'm playing over 
the archive here since I'm trying to play all paper legal cards as opposed to including some alchemy cards but of course you could include the archive at 4 mana instead. There's there and back again another new exciting saga where we get to first prevent a creature from blocking for as long as we control there and back again. The ring tempts us which isn't super relevant in our deck. Then we get to search our library for a mountain, put it on the battlefield untapped even if we'd like. And then we get to make Smaug a 6-6 legendary dragon with flying and haste and when it dies create 14 treasure tokens. So sometimes we actively want to destroy our own Smaug with one of our many sweepers just to generate a ton of extra mana. Then there's a Golos Starless Pilgrim, another nice advantage of playing a 5 color deck. Can help us ramp, maybe even fix our mana by getting the World Tree, which can then fix all our colors. And then we can activate Golos pretty easily, and that can also pull us ahead. There's Timeless Lotus, which can tap for one mana of every color, so also very useful in a 5 color deck. And then Awaking the Trolls can be fun, destroying a land, then stealing a land from the opponent's graveyard perhaps, and then making a bunch of trolls if we have more lands than the opponent. And Chromatic Orrery, also very nice with Tom Bombadil in play, as we can maybe activate it to draw five cards, one for each color among permanents we control, and can also tap to make five mana. Then the next category is more card draw, where we have the Conundrum, drawing a card when it enters and punishing the opponent for putting extra lands on the battlefield. Experimental Augury can also be quite nice, letting us proliferate to add extra lore counters onto our sagas, even at instant speed. We've got Goldberry. That's uh, Tom Bombadil's wife, which can potentially move around some lore counters and maybe draw extra cards in the process. Not an incredibly powerful card, but thought it would be flavorful to include. Fall of Gilgalad we typically don't want to play on turn 2, since we first get to scry, and then we get to put 2 plus 1 counters on a creature, so we already want to have a creature in play. And eventually we get to fight 2 creatures, and if our creature dies in the process, we also get to draw 2. Then there's Sithis, which lets us draw extra cards whenever we cast an enchantment and gain one life. Scroll of Isildur can maybe steal an opposing artifact for as long as we control it, then tap two creatures and put a stun counter on them, and eventually draw a card for each tapped creature the opponent controls. We've got Fable of the Mirror Breaker, another excellent saga. We've got Enchantress's Presence, similar to Sithis, drawing an extra card whenever we cast an enchantment spell. Satessan Champion is also very similar, getting an extra plus one counter in the process as well with Constellation. And then a War of the Last Alliance can find two different legendary creatures, including maybe Sithis or Goldberry. We've got some other legendary creatures throughout, so there's quite a bit of card selection here with a War of the Last Alliance, and eventually gives our team a double strike as well. Showdown of the Skulls can provide more card advantage by exiling the top four cards that we get to play over the course of two turns. It's also very nice to play for free with Tom, so we have all our mana untapped to use it on the exiled cards, basically. The One Ring is not a saga, but it's still very powerful, letting us draw extra cards and protecting us the turn after we played it. And then the Cruelty of Gix also lets us read ahead to any chapter, can first maybe start by taking a look at the opponent's hand, taking away a creature or planeswalker, then we can search up any card in our deck at the cost of 3 life, and eventually return a creature from a graveyard onto the battlefield under our control, so it can also synergize with Tom, similar to Elspeth Conqueror's Death and Eldest Reborn. And then we've got some more miscellaneous cards that synergize very nicely in our deck with Satsuki, potentially putting extra lore counters on our sagas. And then when it dies, we can also return one of those sagas from our graveyard back to our hand. Then a Sterling Grove will give all our other enchantments Shroud, which is the old version of Hexproof, where we also can't target our enchantments, but that's usually not a problem. And we can sacrifice it for one mana to search up any enchantment and put it on top of our deck. Azur is a 1-4 flyer that can turn our enchantments into creatures by paying one on a white, and those creatures will have Hexproof, Death Touch, and Lifelink as well, so it can be especially nice with an expensive enchantment like Leyline Binding that can turn into a 6-6 six, six creature. Then we've got Brilliant Restoration, as well as a Dance of the Mains, as ways to get back several enchantments like our sagas from the graveyard straight onto the battlefield, and in the case of Dance of the Mains, potentially turn them into 4-4 creatures as well. And then we've got some more interesting blue cards with Negate to counter a non-creature spell. Displacer Kitten can also be very effective alongside Sagas, as we can keep resetting them and then start from Chapter 1 to get incremental value. Time Warp can also be very nice with our Sagas, as we get to essentially add a lore counter to all our Sagas in the process. And then Akira Best of Sea God, one of our best Sagas, especially if we can put it in play for free with Tom, making an 8-8 Kraken with Hexproof. Then we can tap all opposing non-land permanents for a whole turn cycle, and then gain control of target permanent and opponent controls and untap it. And then our mana base has one of each snow-covered basic to search up. 
all 10 of the try lands, which have all three basic land types, good for domain, but also good for our check lands like Glacial Fortress, which is more likely to come into play untapped. We're also playing the Shock lands, which have those two basic land types to go alongside our check lands, and then the Innistrad dual lands, which will come into play untapped later in the game. So I'm not playing any pain lands, no fast lands either, since we need our lands to be untapped later in the game. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Ramos, the Dragon Engine, another 5-color deck. Our hand seems fine. Turn 2 into the north, get our wet mana sorted. Just need to try and combine Sithis with another enchantment in the same turn, so we could go Sithis plus Fall. Bit light on Sagas in general, so I'm not sure if we're gonna play Tom first chance we get, or if we wait to set up a Saga first. Thoughtseize is going to disrupt us. That's too bad. Might take Sithis over into the north. Yep. Alright. So now playing Fall is not quite as exciting when we don't have a creature to pick up two plus one counters. So just play a tapped Proving Ground perhaps. Could also go with a tapped World Tree and then cycle this. Which may be alright. And then we've got a Golos on 5, now that we don't have an enchantment going. Bank job. So that can find more creatures and make treasure. Okay, good binding to destroy it. Could still play Golos first and then next turn maybe double spell Naturalist and Binding. Which I guess we could do right now. Maybe that's still better. Now we could also play Tom. That way it gets to trigger next turn once we finish our binding. Get a tri lands with red and white preferably. Playing Golos is tempting, but let's give uh, Tom a try. This may get countered. But then with Golos finding a land, it should be easier to replay. Could see a board wipe here. Take care of Tom and Naturalist. Crossroads names green. So no double white for a sweeper. There's still some black ones that could be effective. Or a sword skin exile tom. Fair enough. So we'll play Golos and then Fall seems fine as well. But wanna search up a land before we scry. And I don't think we have any strong preferences for which land to get since we have our world tree fixing our mana. So just grab a land that we don't necessarily want to draw or just a command tower. Supreme Verdict and Scroll. Well, Scroll could be effective if we can steal Ramos for a while. Don't think we need Verdict. Put an upkeep stop on the off chance I want to activate Golos, since we have 7 mana. Knight of Autumn can destroy it now. Okay, so take our draw. Two counters on Naturalist. And then could replay Tom, which may work out. Opponent chumps. Uh, Wrath of God, our opponent finally found double white, so they had a sweeper after all. Bit of a setback. Okay, so now Tom cost a 9 mana, so we're not too close to casting it. 
could just play Zer, could get the scroll going, but yeah, I'll play Zer. Five five dragon with ward two, so we can still despark it, which is what we'll do, since scroll is already a great answer to Ramos. Ooh, nice, a brilliant restoration. Yeah, that gets back a few things. Artifacts and enchantments. Let's go. Nothing to destroy with binding, but that's all right. Goals triggers, get another land out of the deck. We'll keep the tri lands, which I can at least cycle. Weather Sea Treaty seems fine. Could give a creature plus five, plus five right away. And attack for one. And does our opponent have another board wipe? If not, we can probably just kill them next turn. Could also turn our sagas into creatures with the Eternal Schemer. And Tom would have Hexproof and Indestructible. Can also activate Golos before we draw, since that way we're guaranteed a free Weather Seed Treaty at the very least. It's going to be an adult gold dragon hitting us for four. So there's definitely a bit of a dragon sub-theme here, it seems, with the liberated primeval. Aramos also a dragon. Okay, so do we want to activate Golos here? Yeah, sure. Finding lots of nice sagas here. That's awesome. Kyurabas the Sea God. Add some plus one counters. And get another land. So free best of sea god, draw with Sithis. Restoration, find the planes. And then Weather Seed Treaty. We will read ahead. And we already have Death Touch from the Eternal Schemer, so now we can add Trample to that list as well. And then we could still activate the Eternal Schemer on an enchantment that doesn't have Summoning Sickness, so how about Binding? And attack all out. Has to jump Golos. So they're not dead since they gain for life. But uh, yeah, they're definitely in a rough spot. Genesis Ultimatum could maybe save them. Look at the top five and put all permanents in play. Hydroid for zero, not quite. Opponent passes and they explode. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Kiora, Sovereign of the Deep, so a Leviathan, Octopus, Serpent, Tribal deck. Our hand is not perfect, don't have any mana acceleration, no white whatsoever for Conqueror's Death. So I think I got a Mulligan, even though Conqueror's Death could be effective. This is better. The uh, turn to Gross Barrel if we start with Shipwreck Marsh, perhaps. And then we can play Conundrum after we play Champion to draw. Could also play Fortress, actually. And then Stomping Ground untapped. Marsh will be untapped on three. Ooh, nice. Sanctum Weaver. Does that change my play? I think Gross Barrel first might still be our rights, so we can maybe draw off Champion when we play Sanctum Weaver. Opponent with a Cold Steel Heart. Alright, nice. Get to play Signet plus Champion now. And next turn, enable Constellation. A Mindstone for more ramp. And a Garrick's Uprising. Okay. Step one, Sanctum Weaver. Supreme Verdict we're not casting right now. And 
uh, Dance of the Mans could come in handy later, although Restoration is very similar. So could use more Sagas at the moment. Opponent plays Kyura, gets to draw. And there's a many journeys. So we've got a ton of mana to work with. If I play many journeys, we get to draw off champion, see what else we pick up. And then we can still play Tom. Ooh, nice binding the old gods. So ward three, we should be able to pay with Sanctum Weaver. Attack for five. And then now we've got a couple sagas going, so Tom's going to be much more effective. Emoti provides immediate value with Cascade. Finds a Chromatic Lantern. And get a Tri-Land. And then play Tom. And then Cruelty. Trigger Champion, and we'll start from Chapter 1. So Tom has Hexproof and Indestructible. Get to take one of their Serpents here, probably the Yawning Depths. They still have a Graven Lore, and Rejuvenation could be quite scary. Okay. Attack for 6. And then next turn we get some free value with Tom as our Sagas finish. Opponent casting Rejuvenation with Cascade, hoping for the best, and yeah, they found Invasion of Zendikar. And then Conundrum's gonna trigger to send those back. So not quite as effective as they would have liked, but still. Opponent putting a ton of free stuff in play with a Rejuvenation. Now your Kraken and Kyura being the scariest ones. So, the game's far from over. Kyura can turn a Kraken into an 8 8. And that's what they'll do. Uprising triggers. So, we can search our library for whatever we'd like. We could return the favor and make our own Kraken. Um, Reverse Rebuke also comes to mind here. Yeah, that's got to be the most effective card to just win the game. Triggers the Tessin Champion. And we get to search up a Legendary with the War of the Last Alliance. So that's great too. Zur can maybe animate some of our enchantments to attack with. Get to draw a ton of cards. And uh, yeah, Reverse Rebuke should seal the deal. And that does it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and it's the battle against Sauron, the Dark Lord. Our hand is not perfect, but if we find a third land for Cultivate, we should be fine. Our late game's looking good with Kyrabas the Sea God and Dance of the Mans to get stuff back. But if they can take away the Cultivate or counter it, then our hand's gonna be pretty clunky. All right, Sanders Lounge is good. So Cultivate, we have double blue already. So don't think it matters too much what we get. Maybe an extra green source, keep planes in the deck. And another red source is fine. So we could play turn four Tom Bombadil. But maybe Eldest Reborn lines up better. Mordor Muster makes a 1 1. So, Naturalists can let me play a 4 mana enchantment, which we don't have. Don't quite get to double spell the Living Lore with Naturalist. So, could also just play Tom. 
And if they take it out, I could let it go to the graveyard and eventually get it back with Aldous Reborn. Key to the Archive is a good one. Not playing it myself to avoid the alchemy card, but I used to play it in almost every deck. Can get a powerful spellbook card. And of course, making two mana is always great. So probably time to double spell Naturalist with an Eldest Reborn to get that going. Since their opponent's gonna keep that 1-1 around for a while. And next turn a Kyrabas the Sea God could be effective. Could see Sauron in action. Also protects them from an Eldest Reborn, since they can amass and then have something to sacrifice. Crows and Grip is what they found with the spellbook. Takes out our Eldest Reborn. And a Shield Roots next. Okay, so let's see here. Can't quite go Celestus plus a Kiora. So just Kiora plus a tapped Temple Garden seems fine. And we're waiting to set up a big Dance of the Mains to get all our sagas back. And Brainstorm, and that's fine. If it's not combined with a Shuffle effect, it loses a lot of effectiveness. And without any real fetch lands outside of Fabled Passage, it's not as easy to enable in Historic Brawl as it is in other paper formats. But it is good with Shieldred, gaining a bit of life. And a Nicol Bolas, Dragon God, is next. Likely to take out Tom. And, uh, yeah, probably move it back to the command zone, since it's gonna be a while before we get back Aldestraborn and it gets to chapter 3. And Shieldred attacks, since it's gonna get tapped down anyways. Ooh, with the one ring. That's fitting. So, definitely take out Nicol Bolas. Question is whether we send both creatures in case of instant speed removal here. And uh, yeah, it's a tough call. I think hitting the point for 8 is still worth it. So we'll maybe start there. And then I could just replay Tom. That way we get value of Cura ending next turn. That seems fine. Three cards in hand for the opponents. The key was tapped, so they can't use that for mana. Is it finally time for Sauron to enter the battlefield? Yep, yeah, there it is. Get to untap. And we get to gain control of Sauron if we want. And then we just have to sacrifice a legendary artifact or legendary creature, which I guess would be Tom at this point. So maybe better to steal Shieldred then. And a Weather Seed Treaty could go to Chapter 3 right away. Bump Naturalists. And then what we could do is, let's see... If I play the One Ring and draw land, I could still Conquer's Death, Sacking Shield Roots, Exiling Sauron. Or I could just Conquer's Death and play it safe. Opponent does get to a mess. And this way we get rid of Shield Root in case our opponent could bounce it back to their hand. Which is possible. And now we're accumulating more Sagas in our graveyard to eventually get back with Dance of the Mains. So I think I prefer developing my mana with the Celestis as opposed to playing Satsuki. Even though Satsuki could speed up our Elspeth Conqueror's death to enable Tom once again. Would have also been thematic to sacrifice the One Ring to take out Sauron, but would have needed to draw a land for that to work. Sauron exiled. And it looks like our opponent may have disconnected since they didn't send it back to the command zone, which is usually something you want to avoid. 
falls to 3. And we may not get to see Dance of the Mains in action this game. But if X equals 6 or more, it not only gets back all those artifacts and non-aura enchantments, but it also turns them into creatures, which is pretty fun. Alright, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Emoti, the blue-green ramp deck. And our hand is not perfect, but a Sithis followed by a Fall of Gilglad could be effective. Turn to Silvala off Elvish Mystic. Okay, we better draw land here. We did. And then with a treaty we can keep finding more. Presence is tempting. Although next turn, how's our sequencing like? Probably just treaty. Get to draw Sithis. Yeah, we already have a card draw engine. I don't think we need presence. We are working towards a river's rebuke, which is gonna be pretty effective at resetting the board. Could also play a vessel next turn for more ramp. There's a turn 3 Emoti, which will also draw off Silvala, and a Migration Path. Finding two more lands, that's a good hit. So we're pretty far behind. Could get the Scriptures going to at least reset the board. Maybe that's worth it. Sure, it also draws a card. And I guess we'll attack for four. So now we disincentivize the opponent to play another large creature, as it would die to the scriptures. Hedron Archive, that one survives. And a Vastwood Surge, so they're just setting up for next turn basically. And yeah, that could be quite scary. Fierce Empath, get whatever finisher they want. And an Ulamog is going to be the target of choice. Yeah, don't have a great answer lined up. So, Treaty, draw a card. Hope to hit a land so we can play Sanctum Weaver, draw an author card. Okay. And I want an island. So Ulamog's gonna be hard to beat. But at least we're hitting our land drops for the time being. So they can exile Sithis and Sanctum Weaver. And then now we could play Tom. It's not quite indestructible, unfortunately. Brilliant Restoration, also not looking great. And Bouncing Ulamog, just for the opponent to replay it, feels pretty rough. I guess it would be delayed by a turn since we also bounce Archive, but not the ideal solution. So maybe go for Tom and hope to hit something nice of the uh, final chapter once we get another free saga. Might find a way to exile Ulamog. The Kami War, Elspeth Conquers Death come to mind. And there's Emoti. Hitting a Cold Steel Heart. And a Leafkin Druid. And opponent foretells what could be Elrond's Epiphany to take an extra turn. So Ulamog likely to attack us and mill 20 cards. Or Exile in this case. Milling would be a lot better with a Restoration in hand. So yeah, I'll take 10. Probably gonna Reverse Rebuke here. And then we can pump either Tom or the Token. And there's Elspeth Conquer's Death, perfect. Right what we needed to Exile Ulamog. So we're back in the game. 
And then now Rivers Rebuke, send everything packing. Get a nice attack in. And uh, yeah, Restoration could get back some goodies. Titan of Industry can blow up or Conqueror's Death, but that would actually help us out. So maybe it'll go for token and life gain, no? Destroys or Conqueror's Death to maybe deny getting more Sagas with Tom. And a Leafkin Druid. Okay, so time for Restoration. Treaty can start from Chapter 3. Immediately trigger Tom. And our opponent explodes, yeah. We can take a look at the Exalt cards, double check that it was Elrond's Epiphany. I guess, uh, don't quite get to see here, but that's alright. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Galadriel, a blue-green deck, and our hand seems keepable. We've got Cold Steel Heart and Weaver for early mana acceleration. Starting with a Sphinx of Foresight. So that can let them scry once Galadriel's in play. Well, let's maybe lead with a Cold Steel Heart in case they're holding up a counter spell. And name White. And then we could potentially play Celestus and Weaver if we draw a land here. Oracle of the Alpha can also scry return. This one luckily enters untapped. Yeah, I think Celestus plus Weaver's fine, and then keep binding to maybe answer Galadriel itself. A birthday escape. And they get to trigger Galadriel right away by choosing the Oracle as their ring bearer. So they get to maybe put a land in play. They bottomed all three. And the Disdainful Strokes, good to know about. Verdict is uncounterable. And they did get to put a land in play with Galadriel after all. Alright, so let's get rid of Galadriel while we can. Maybe with Binding, and then let's see, I've got two enchantments, three, four, not quite enough to play anything else. Conqueror's Death doesn't have any creatures to return unless we run Tom into the Disdainful Stroke, although they may have scryed it to the bottom in the meantime, kind of lost track. All right, let's uh, Conqueror's Death then. A Black Lotus, which they found off Oracle. And now Rangers to steal my Sanctum Weaver, that's rude. And a Time Warp to take an extra turn. Alright, our opponent's going off. They are down to just a Sphinx and an Unknown, but uh, we'll see here. Getting to cast a Black Lotus is pretty powerful as it turns out. Put on discards Malevolent Hermit. And now an Elder Gargoth. Yeah, that's a good one. So, Supreme Verdict is looking good. Even though we lose our own Sanctum Weaver. That seems acceptable as we can return it with Conqueror's Death later. And there's a Sphinx. And the Spark, a nice answer. So I would prefer to get a Saga going before I play Tom, so we can get value a bit sooner. So that means either waking the trolls or binding the Sphinx, and then keep up the Spark. We can de Spark Sphinx, whereas we cannot de Spark Galadriel is the only concern. So maybe waking the trolls is fine, although I'm unlikely to make many trolls with it is a problem. Yeah, let's binding then. And a joint exploration and response. It 
So your opponent's empty-handed. Next turn they get to replay Galadriel. And next turn we'll play Tom. Elrond's good too, but that one we can despark. Search for a forest, can get a try land. Don't think we're too bothered by which one. And our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw in the Tom Bombadil mirror, so we're guaranteed to get our Tom Bombadil fill. This hand is lacking some early acceleration, so I think I got a mulligan. This isn't much better. But it's not terrible. Conqueror's Death and Kami War are impactful cards in the matchup. So I'll give it a shot. Start with a Triome, maybe Fable Passage on two, now just another Triome. And this can now be our fourth land. Okay, Goldberry can come in handy later. Just want to get my mana established. Playing an untapped land to keep up Negate and then next turn playing a tap land is also reasonable. Modern Age. And a Swords can answer Tom. So, yeah, just play a tap land. If we need to negate, we can negate. If not, we can Swords Tom. And then if I fetch an island, I can play Goldberry and keep up Negate. We already have double white for Conqueror's Death. One ring to rule them all, discard it. And there's Tom. Alright, well, let's exile it. And then double blue also gives us access to Time Warp. We do really need to pick up another land or two. Eldest Reborn, I'll happily negate. And there's a Mana Confluence, alright. So, Time Warp is not too exciting at the moment. No target for Conqueror's Death, so maybe we just play Tom. Battle of Frost and Fire will kill Tom and Goldberry, husband and wife. Yeah, that happens. At least we can let Tom go to the graveyard and then get it back with Conqueror's Death, perhaps. Kami War now also an option. What's better? So probably want to deny this Cry 3 if possible. Yeah, I can see the second chapter taxing the opponent being relevant. Waking the trolls, yeah, that's painful. Might prevent us from casting the Kami War now. Can take an extra turn, I guess, and then get Tom back and play Kami War. Ooh, a brilliant restoration could be great too. And then Tom's gonna trigger right away as it sees the Conqueror's Death. Get a final counter, and Binding now answers Waking the Trolls. That looks good. That was a sweet turn. Can probably wait on Brilliant Restoration, Kami War, get rid of Arcane Signets. And we might be back in business. Now Tom with a counter survives our own Battle of Frost and Fire, so we can answer an opposing Tom. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Bilbo, Retired Burglar. And our hand is missing red mana to cast Fable. So this one's pretty sketchy. This one we can try and keep. So Dustin Champion is pretty good if it can stick around, and then Curse could name Bilbo, or we can just exile it with the swords. So maybe just play Tapped World Tree. 
Could have also played it after playing a turn to Azusa's Many Journeys. Could also save it until after we place a Tessin Champion. So maybe just go with the tap land here. Doubt we're gonna need to Swords a 2-drop. And then uh, also hold Curse until after we play Champion. Opponent passes. Yeah, let's wait on Champion until we can play it and an enchantment in the same turn. Cold Steel Heart names blue. Gets memory lapsed. Okay, so good Curse of Silence named Bilbo, or we can just exile it. That happens. And then could tap out for champion. I think I feel better about replaying Cold Steel Heart. And name blue. And then next turn we can finally go champion plus silence. Okay, Fable. That resolves. Having two green sources at the moment makes it harder to play Tom, but eventually the World Tree will fix our mana. It's just gonna take a second. And a Shadow Spear is next. Okay, play Champion, Curse on Bilbo. And land is good, so that can maybe fetch a Swamp. Opponent discarding Mountain and Essence Flux. If they equip the Shaman, I don't think I block, even though they get to make a free treasure regardless. Makes it easier for them to finish off Satessan Champion, which is not something we want. And then I also don't feel the need to fetch with Passage, since we don't know exactly which land to get, and it will be untapped anyways. And a Specialist now, alright, gets to bounce Satessan Champion back. We'll just replay it, play Azusa's Many Journeys. Now I might want to fetch a Swamp. Okay. So waking the trolls next turn is looking good, so we've got the fixing from the world tree. Well, there is a reflection to worry about. Currently don't have an answer. Mimic, copy specialists. Bounce champion. So they can keep bouncing our stuff with reflection now until we take it out. And another ninjutsu creature here to pick up Specialist once again. And the file of Galadriel can also potentially draw more. Well, a timely battle of Frost and Fire here. And uh, yeah, we'll just cast it. That'll reset the board. And now we can take our time to set up our Satessan Champion and Tom once again. I'll happily cash in Curse of Silence if they play Bilbo, since that way it ends up in the graveyard where we can get it back with Dance of the Mains. Cosmos Elixir, also pretty good alongside the file. Okay. Scry 3 can help us dig pretty deep for more enchantments. And Akira, best of sea gods, is awesome. So, if I play Tom, it's not gonna have hexproof yet. So, our opponent could bounce it with their four mana specialists. And then we're not guaranteed to get the free Akira, best of sea god, which is what we're hoping for. Although, what we can do is wait until chapter three and then cast some expensive spell to at least get the value. So,. Don't think we need Clifftop, but yeah, both Rebuke and Kirabasa Seagod seem great, so can't really go wrong. 
Maybe best to see God first. And then we can go with uh, Champion plus Tom. They get to bounce one of them. And so be it. So I imagine they'll bounce Tom back. Otherwise, putting Kyrabas as he got second would have been better to be able to cast it for free, essentially, with Tom's ability. But now I get to cast it, trigger Champion, trigger the battle. Alright, let's go for it. What do we discard? Waking the Trolls is not looking amazing. Could be fun with uh, Displacer Kitten, admittedly. But we can also get it back with Dance of the Mains. And hit our land drop. Good attack. Our opponent can remove the Hexproof with Shadow Spear to still potentially bounce our Kraken. But uh, they no longer have Reflection to copy Specialist. A Litho Formension could be fun. Our opponent really needs to clear their hands to get more value from the file if they can draw while empty-handed, but they seem to be stuck with one final card in hand. And yeah, our opponent throws in the towel. So yeah, that's a pretty sweet battle of Frost and Fire to get us back in the game and eventually take over with Tom. And overall, quite pleased with how this Tom Bombadil deck turned out. It's not quite as oppressive as some of the other five-color commanders like Golos or Kenrith. At least it's a bit of a thematic deck that needs to be built around and the overall card quality isn't quite as high as some of the other five-color decks. But when it works, Tom can be incredibly powerful getting to cheat those expensive sagas into play. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.